Hello everyone, this is Maureen and welcome to My Crochet Story. Today is May the 7th, so we're here for just a little bit of chit chat, what I've been working on, and what you can expect to see this next week. But first, before we get started, let me say thank you to everyone that is taking just a moment to see what it is I've uploaded today and just like I said, to say thank you. Now, if you are new to my channel and this is the first video you're viewing, please take a moment to go look to see what my other videos are about. And if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and then look for the bell that has what I like to call little hugs on the side so that it notifies, oh, be sure to click it. That way it notifies you every time I upload some content. Well guys, you know that I have been harping on the fact that with my amigurumi, I've not been real, been real happy with when I have to change colors, the little stair stepping thing. So I've been um, looking for a new way to do it. Um, I've, I think that I have um, about figured out which um, technique I'm going to use. But I wanted to share with you <laughs> I was looking through some of my books, and I'll tell you why I was looking through my books in a moment, but I ran across this one, which I forgot that I had. It's called the Ultimate Crochet Bible. Now, this is um, the work of, just a minute, Jane Crowfoot. Now, the first time she uh, had this book published was in 2008 and then it was published again in 2016. Now she is a self-taught um, crocheter and knitter. She um, learned how to crochet and knit because she fell in love with her great-grandmother's um, handmade blankets. Uh, let's see, she studied textile design at Winchester School of Art in 1996, she became a design crochet, the design, excuse me, consultant for Rowan Yarns and went on to work with Debbie Bliss. Jane is a teacher of the recent crochet revival. Oh, excuse me, teacher. She is a leader of the recent crochet revival, which has seen knitters all over the world put down their needles and pick up a crochet hook. Now, she does have some other books, such as The Ultimate Sewing Bible, The Ultimate Quilting Bible, The Ultimate Knitting Bible, uh, Ultimate Nut, uh, Art Bible, Ultimate Woodwork, Ultimate Beading, Ultimate Paper Craft, and Ultimate, ultimate, ultimate uh, Knit Bible. So I'm assuming then uh, when she went to the to study textile design at Winchester Art of School and with her um, association with Rowan Yarns, um, she was able to expand quite a bit into not just uh, areas of yarn, but you know, here is her art. Um, she's got some beading and woodworking, paper craft. I mean, she's a very, it sounds like a very talented um, young woman but I'm here to talk to you about this ultimate crochet Bible now like I said I've had it for a while um, what I was looking for in here was a particular stitch but I ran across uh, a section in here that is all about crochet basics and here it talked about a two color spiral now, I was really hoping that it was going to tell me how to do a color change, but it doesn't. It's not so much about the color change. Um, I mean, it looks like it would, but it's not doing exactly what I wanted to, and I did test it. So, as far as amigurumi goes, it's not going to be something that I can use, but I wanted to share the book with you for a couple of reasons. One, Number one is I think it would be a great book. For someone who is just learning to crochet number one it um, first steps how to hold it uh, well no leave me let me even back up further than that um, there is so much information about uh, getting started choosing a hook uh, she has a nice little guide here of um, all the different hook styles, you know, um, 
There's even some here, the different types of the hooks that you can get. And then she goes on to discuss um, other little equipments like maybe a, um, a yarn cutter, a hook and kneading needle gauge. You know, some of us have those, some of us don't. Obviously stitch markers and pins, a tape measure, sharp scissors, that kind of thing. And then she goes on to talk about yarn. And I think that this is a really good section in this book because she not only gives wonderful pictures, but she also uh, tells a little bit about the fiber content. Then she goes on to uh, give charts. I mean, things that most that we as crocheters for sure are already familiar with. But for a beginner, you know, this book really does seem to have all of it in one place. Uh, this, folks, now many of us, you know, there's the do we swatch? Do we not swatch? You know, how many of you do make a swatch whenever you're getting ready to do a new project, especially if you want to change the size of the yarn or the hook, you know, that you're using, and how many of you don't? Well, here is a very good illustration why I am of the uh, class that says you should make a swatch, especially if it's the first time that you're making it. Now, I, was going, I know there's going to be a lot of you out there that are going to argue with me, and that's fine, because you probably have been crocheting long enough that you know what your tension is, you know what kind of swatch you should have or what your project may look like as far as size is concerned, you know, your own gauge. You may know yourself well enough to feel like you don't need to make a swatch. But as many years as I've been crocheting, I don't ever feel confident enough without making up at least a very small swatch, even just a 2 by 3 or a 4x4, a four four, folks. It doesn't have to be anything really large. But you do need to, in my opinion, you do need to make a swatch for a new project with new thread and the hook that you're going to be using so that you know what the size is going to be, especially if you're making a wearable. So as I said, look at this. Now guys, this is using a single crochet and a size, let me see here. She used a, let me see if it's over here. Um, yes, she used a five millimeter hook. Now, this is a sample of the same number of stitches. Okay, what I want to tell you about each one of these swatches. Each sample has the same number of stitches and the same number of rows has been worked for each. Now, this is a 10 count yarn here. This one is in a lace yarn. This one here. This one here is in a DK. And this one here is in a, an Aran or what we call a four way. Now they're all using a single crochet and they're all using an H hook. So look at the difference in the sizes okay so to me it is very important that you know that you build a swatch especially like I said if you're working if you're going to be making a wearable garment so for those of you newbies out there I'm just saying here it is by a crochet designer herself all right and let's see, uh, choosing a yarn. Oh, look, 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 look. There is all of the laundry and dry cleaning symbols that are on there. And you know, I've been seeing quite a bit uh, this little symbol here and I could not figure out what it was. Well, there it is. It says if it's just a circle, it means it can be dry cleaned. Now it goes on to also, if it's one that has a P in it or an F in it, the P says may be cleaned with a fluorocarbon or petroleum-based solvent. And the F says it may be cleaned with just a fluorocarbon solvent. So evidently there is a difference, but this one here can be used with um, a petroleum base, and this one here can only be used with a fluorocarbon base. So anyway, 
like I said, lots and lots and lots of good stuff, but especially right here at the beginning, I just wanted to mention a few things, especially for, um, for new beginners. <coughs> Excuse me. And another thing that I like is <coughs> she explains how to read a pattern because I have heard so many times by so many folks that have even been crocheting for a while, they don't read a pattern. And therefore, whoop, where'd you go? Many only read off of a chart. And then many say that they can't read off of a chart, but they read off of a pattern. So she goes into very nice, simple details on how to do both of them. And then uh, she just runs into different types of stitches and gives examples of what they look like. Now, this is not a book that has all of the, or the majority of the crochet stitches that many of us use. This is just a very nice um, crochet book that will help you to get started, especially if you're a beginner. Uh, tools, different weights of yarns, uh, different types of yarn, you know, whether it's a cotton, a natural fiber, or a man-made fiber. Uh, the different hooks, which ones are recommended for which fiber content that you're going to be using, all sorts of stuff like that. So, what can you expect from me this week? Um, I don't really want to show all of him because he's not quite finished yet, but um, Forrest the Fisherman is almost finished. Now, guys, <laughs> I have to tell you, um, I fell back into one of my old habits of uh, working on one project and not working on anything else. Now, I did get a little bit done on my show lock. You'll see that tomorrow. Um, I do hope to get one more round on Sophie, but you may not see that this week. Uh, Boris most definitely will be finished by Wednesday, and I should have parts of Valentine. My husband, I kept calling him Valentine, and my husband said his name is Valentine the pirate. You should be able to see quite a bit of him put together by um, Wednesday. And then Thursday, I haven't figured out yet what I might pop up and show you, but it will be interesting. And I hope that this next week here we'll be able to um, have a visit with you from All Handmaids Connie's for Southern Sisters on Friday, but we'll just have to wait and see. So be sure that you uh, keep your eyes peeled for something on Southern Sisters and what house we'll be at. And then I hope you'll look forward to my um, gratitude, the weekly devotional I put out on Saturdays for you on gratitude for the children of God. Because I know that for me, it really has been a nice journey so far this year on, I mean, we all know what gratitude is and we know how to be grateful, but... When you look at being grateful for not only the things that we have, but being grateful for ourselves, you know, that's that's a journey worth taking. So I hope you'll be there for me, with me, excuse me, on Saturday to see how that's coming along. Well, I have enjoyed being here for just a minute to not only share that book with you, because like I said, I forgot that I even had it. Um, it is a nice guide. I will leave a link to it from, I know I got it from Amazon, so I'll leave a link for you in my description box below so that you can go and check it out for yourself, self, see if it's something that is worth having in your little library of crochet books and other books that you may like to read or reference to. And I will see you out on the YouTube streets here in just a day or two. As always, be the light out there in the darkness for someone today because you never know could be your light that they need to see. I love you all. Bye.